Hello, I'm Dr. Mita Ratan, and this channel is dedicated to skincare for skin of color. As you know, I'm a doctor, but I'm also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of color. So today's video is all about acanthosis nigricans. It's something that really does affect the skin of color community, but we don't discuss it enough as with many of the topics when it comes to skincare. When people would come into my clinic for pigmentation and they would have darker necks or dark, darker under the arms, they would think it was purely a pigment issue when actually there was more going on. So today's video is really addressing it. How do we treat it? Uh, what really is going on with the skin? If that sounds good to you, give me a thumbs up. Let's dive right in. So what it looks like is thickened velvety skin. That's how we describe it. And you typically see it at the back of the neck, under the arms, in the groin area, and at the back of the knees. Acanthesis nigricans is also associated with diabetes and with obesity, which is why it's becoming more prevalent in our skin of color communities, especially as our diet is changing towards more of a Western diet. So what actually is happening to our skin? So what happens is between the epidermis and dermis, we have the basal layer. That's where the melanocytes live. And what happens is insulin basically goes through, passes through the basal layer and will meet with keratinocytes in the epidermis. Insulin will bind with these insulin-like growth factor receptors. They will stimulate fibroblasts and keratinocytes, and this will lead to thickened velvety skin. Now, the most common cause of acanthosis nigricans is obesity. 50% of those who weigh, weigh more than double their recommended weight will get acanthosis nigricans. So the number one thing that you need to do to treat this is to lose weight because you want to increase sensitivity of insulin, which means that you have less insulin than flooding the system. This is really important. It's instrumental to break this vicious cycle that's taking place. Additional things that you can do are either oral or topical vitamin A, so retinoids, because that, what that does is helps increase cell turnover. You can use gentle peels, such as mandelic acid, but until you treat the root cause, you're gonna be getting temporary results at best. In addition, any tyrosinase inhibitors that you use are going to struggle to get through the thickened skin in order to reach the basal layer where the melanocytes live. One thing I would say to avoid are lasers for skin of color to try and treat this pigmentation because you can burn the skin and get more pigmentation. It's just not even worth the risk profile isn't worth it for skin of color. So the routine I would give you is when you wash first thing in the morning, make sure you're using a non-inflammatory product. So something with no fragrance in it that's um, hypoallergen hypoallergenic. So you do that first and then I would apply either your moisturizer such as Cetraben or CeraVe and then apply your sunscreen, especially if you've got, if you're exposing it to UV. So I would recommend that you go with, an, with zinc oxide a mineral sunscreen just because it's anti-inflammatory too, which you really are trying to soothe the skin as much as possible with acanthosis nigricans. At night time, if you want to try a retinol, then what I would recommend is wash um, under the arms and around the neck area. Apply 0.5% retinol from uh, The Ordinary or try 0.3% from Paula's Choice. You could potentially go up a little bit higher in terms of strength, but I would start off carefully because I don't want you to be getting to irritate, to irritate the skin and then get more pigmentation. So start off at 0.5% or the 0.3% from Paula's Choice. So you moisturize first, then the retinol, and then moisturize again. That's called the retinol sandwich. Alternatively, if you decide I just want to treat the pigmentation, then go straight in with your tyrosinase inhibitors. So don't moisturize, wash, have clean skin, and then pop on the tyrosinase inhibitors because you want to get maximum penetration of those actives into the skin. So things like uh, alpha arbutin from The Ordinary is very good or niacinamide. Many different brands now do niacinamide. The other good one is tranexamic acid. I think Inky List does a really good one. And then you can moisturize. You do that for about three to six months. If you're seeing results, great. If you decide you need to upgrade, then you can always use uh, the Dr. V body pigmentation kit which has got 10 tyrosinase inhibitors in them um, often with skin of color our melanocytes are very difficult to treat and one or two actives 
isn't going to be enough. Regardless, even if you're using the body pigmentation kit, you are going to have to get the glucose under control. Otherwise, no matter what you do, it's going to be temporary. You know, it's really important to do that. I don't want to waste your money with anybody. So just for your own knowledge, the 10 tyrosinase inhibitors in the Dr. V body pigmentation kit that's going to color are alpha RB10, vitamin C, uh, water-soluble sodium ascorbyl phosphate, fat-soluble tetrahexyl decalascorbate, N-acetyl glucosamine, diuric acid, uh, salicylic acid, kojic dipalmitate, licorice extract, three forms of vitamin A, that's retinol, retinaldehyde, and retinol palmitate, plus your vitamin E, just so that you are aware which tyrosinase inhibitors are best for skin of color. And you can get it from skincarebydrv.com. Okay, so don't forget, I'm in the comment section for one hour of the launch of every single video. Please do download your free guide for skincare for skin of color down below. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at the Hyperpigmentation Clinic and Skincare by Dr. V and on TikTok, which is Dr. V Thank you so much for watching.